In this session, Joji will look into how Maersk technology has adopted Agile EA inspired by Agile Lean practices to accelerate the digital transformation journey organizationally. So uh, warm virtual welcome, Joji George, over to you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, thank Very you. Clear. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you. Uh, welcome to this session. Um, I hope you and your family are healthy and safe. Uh, uh, this is, I'm dialing in from Bangalore. Uh, before I start, uh, let me give you a quick context to this. Uh, so when I joined uh, MERS, the idea was to, you know, um, start the digital uh, transformation journey there. And uh, the last six to seven uh, years, uh, right, I have been mostly involved in uh, in the transformation journey is in, in two major domains. Um, one is uh, healthcare and another is uh, obviously transport and logistics. Um, and uh, without much, I'll just jump into the first thing. Uh, so before we start on that, let's look at some of the key drivers, which is, which is you know, uh, um, making digital transformation a must have uh, in, in today's world, right? Um, and this is also from what we see in the industry today. Uh, let's, from the top, you know, the connectivity. We are all in a connected world today. Uh, we have social media, mobile apps, you know, a lot of IoT, cloud, all this is, you know, help, uh, helping us get, get connected. And that's be, having an impact on the behavior that the customers have, right? They want a multi-channel experience. They want things to seamlessly move around. Uh, that's a, a, one of the big uh, drivers for digital transformation. The second aspect is obviously about expectations that and with the new digital uh, native uh, solutions out there, the expectations from our customers are, you know, uh, increasing like never before. Uh, now it's not just important enough that we do uh, our traditional things. So the traditional organizations like Musk and others, uh, we have, you know, adopted uh, digital in, 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 in every form and factor that they could do so that they can not only um, uh, be in the, in the race for digitalization, but also, you know, uh, be not disrupted by the digital uh, disruptors that uh, we see in the industries. The th third key factor is about speed and agility. And this is not, nothing new in the digital world. We know everything is about being, having uh, speed and being agile in what we deliver to the business. Um, and uh, key to that is obviously that in, in the new world, it's all about being fast rather than slow. Uh, the, the gone are the eras when we said being big is enough for being small players in the market. And uh, finally, the competition is uh, increasing as never before. Uh, we have uh, digital play players out there. We have the traditional businesses. So uh, the only way we can, uh, the traditional companies like Musk can survive is, you know, uh, be there, uh, uh, take digital as the competitive advantage. Uh, to what they where what it does and serve its customers much more better. With that, if you look at how how this is all getting you know uh, translated, uh, and data is one single factor which is driving all this. Uh, let me drive a little bit into where we see ourselves uh, uh, in from a real world example. On the left is 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 a is a story representation of what a transport and logistics industry is going through. Uh, the the expectations uh, that uh, in, uh, the customers have is all about you know how can we be uh, not only do uh, just transport my cargo from point A to point B it's also about you know how do I get complete visibility into that how um, uh, am I you know uh, knowing all the exceptions that happen uh, it's also about what happened to the cargo I send out uh, if it's about your fruits and vegetables you send out you want to know whether it, uh, it uh, survived the whole transit. Um, so there are multiple factors that is driving here, uh, those things. And if you look at transport and logistics as an industry, we are way behind in, in digitalization. Um, there's a lot of still paperwork happening. Uh, there's a lot of handoffs because of the nature of the business. We, uh, we cross uh, borders on the land and on, on the ocean, right? And that, that's a pretty complex uh, business to be in. Customers all but today demand uh, the ease of business, 
and the flexibility that we uh, see in ma many other industries. And uh, one of the industries which is closest to what we do is airline. And uh, they demand that, you know, uh, we are as fast and flexible as uh, the airline industry is. Uh, which means that we have to uh, manage multiple integrations, integrations not only within uh, the ecosystem we uh, work in, but also with the customers themselves. Uh, we integrate directly into their enterprise system so that they are able to uh, manage and orchestrate their you know, supply chain better. Um, now, that help, what, what we are doing from technology standpoint is obviously the use of IoTs, big data, and cloud to enable all that and also to integrate uh, uh, with the new newer ways of uh, integration in technology so on the on the right is uh, use cases from the uh, from from the healthcare um, at ge uh, we were the we were the first in the industry to launch a digital platform today that platform uh, powers um, uh, many ai applications and those applications are you know uh, helping uh, physicians you know, make better decisions now, if you look at it today, the relevance of some of these applications are uh, even more than maybe the, those a uh, couple of uh, four or five years back. Uh, and in this uh, era, in these times of uh, pandemic, when we are in a lockdown, uh, things like uh, virtual uh, board uh, meetings uh, and the telemedicine is you know, uh, even more you know, uh, important. And that all started uh, many, many years back. If you look at that, this is all possible because of the data we uh, generate and are able to harness the power of the data. And we, we heard a lot of speakers talk about that. Uh, and, and that's about the terabytes and petabytes of data we are able to uh, make sense out of. Shifting gear to uh, how does EA play a role in that, right? And let me draw upon uh, the, the story we have within us. MERS is a traditional 100 plus year organization uh, which has uh, multiple businesses internally and is used to operate in, in silos, obviously. And then the mergers and acquisitions obviously uh, didn't help much in you know, getting that uh, in, even better. However, uh, when we started the digital journey, it became very clear that we have to have a centralized enterprise architecture as a, you know, as a function uh, that will help us quickly transform this. And we we shifted from the left to the right, but as is normal with any transformation journey, uh, the the culture uh, the culture aspect of the organization, the ways of working in the organization, uh, quickly uh, meant that we are you know uh, a, following a traditional centralized model, uh, which may meant that we have uh, <clears throat> uh, many multiple reviews and approval processes in place. Um, the, we were not able to get the, uh, the agility we wanted, and the businesses uh, didn't see the uh, uh, perceived uh, uh, you know, outcomes that we wanted. And what it quickly led to was obviously a, a, a not a true agile way of working. Um, we, we moved away from uh, being talking about uh, minimum viable products and you know quicker delivery times to multi-year uh, uh, plans and uh, programs, right? Uh, which uh, naturally did not uh, go very well with the organizational ambition of being a, you know, a digital organization going forward. However, uh, when we, uh, while this was all happening, we, we two years, around two years back, we formed the digital uh, organization within, within MERS. And that's where I joined to head architecture. And that was uh, for us a green field to start and look at how can we disrupt ourselves uh, and uh, take some of the uh, uh, learnings from the, the agile and lean processes into the architecture practice itself. And uh, also uh, within the uh, organization engineering and uh, right. And we formed the, what we call the agile uh, operating model. Uh, but before we, we know, we know that, right? Agile is not about just technology. It has uh, multiple aspects to it. It has a process. Uh, it has a uh, process part to it. It has a technology part to it. And then obviously the agility that the business brings about. And uh, as is popularized by uh, uh, Leibon as the domains of agility, uh, we also looked at all those aspects and say, how do we uh, 
take into consideration some of those uh, 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 good uh, learn, uh, practices that it brings for business agility, be it from a agile organizational perspective, be it from processes like you know Scrum and Safe, or from a technology practices like DevOps, you know, and other accounting practices. And what you see is a you know a, a attempt at that, uh, which uh, combines some of those learnings with the uh, EA principle and practices that we have in TOCAF, and we form that uh, um, and we try to you know experiment with this. Um, the framework has uh, was focused on two key elements. The first is about minimal viable architecture, and the second is about DevOps. Right? How do we iterate faster? and be together with the needs of the business. And the philosophy was that how do we move away from architectures seen as an ivory tower and rather and uh, and not focus on too much of upfront design. And but uh, take architecture uh, to the teams and work closely with the teams and iterate uh, architecting and delivering in tandem. Now that meant that we also ha had to ha bring in some changes within the, the um, engineering organizations. We said that teams are agents of the architecture. Uh, architects are there to support and be there throughout the life cycle of the products that we deliver. And with each learning, with the feedback loop, we would iterate through that and then um, you know uh, deliver in a faster mechanism. Now where while this this was happening, uh, the 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 idea behind digital was also uh, what we is typically called as the bi model uh, IT model, right? And we we still had the traditional IT and we had digital on the way. And within the enterprise architecture uh, team that we had, we also looked at a lot of uh, the good techniques we have today uh, to enable uh, transformation within the business itself, right? How do we enable that you know the our business process uh, optimized we took business capability model as a framework to look at and uh, map the whole uh, business that we have today within us and that led to creating uh, what we call the applications landscape and we started looking at how do we rationalize that um, being an century old organization obviously this landscape uh, we have in technologies and um, platforms which is like Two and three decades old to to some of the latest, which is uh, you know, based on cloud and big data. Uh, then we also looked at what is what is the reference architecture we are looking at, what is the target we want to achieve in, in a couple of years from now. What is it also led to a lot of changes within the organization, uh, and to say how do we move from the traditional hierarchical organization to be a more nimble, uh, agile organization, and that that's a journey we are still continuing uh, today. Uh, uh, we are in a phase that we are in the next phase of the transformation. We were looking at uh, the technologies that we had in digital and bring that into the whole organization and we make digital code to the organization. And for that, uh, we are also looking at you know, taking some of these agile uh, EA concepts and architecture concepts and say, how do we uh, take that across the whole technology organization that we have today? Um, and um, it's not yet done. Uh, we, we see this as a big, um, uh, big uh, uh, factor in in the whole organizational change and the um, and the thinking process of how do we accelerate the journey we are in, and how do uh, we take some of these learnings into the into the organization. One of the big example we have is that we have um, business architecture as a centralized function within the organization. So that we can use um, that techniques within that to um, develop new business processes, which and uh, optimize the current business process so that digitization is uh, faster and we can uh, get the, the the results that the business is looking for. Yeah, the, with that, I will um, I'll conclude my talk here and um, uh, thank you for your attention and uh, and. Oh, and we'll uh, I'll respond to the queries if you have any uh, towards the end. Thank you.